Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, hoping everybody can hear me. I'll tell you, sometimes when I'm doing this, it still feels like it's the first time. Um, so somebody let me know whether or not you can hear me well. That would be really great if I can just get a confirmation that you can hear me. Hey, Drew, can you hear me, Drusilla? Oh, yay. Thank you, sis. Love you. Um, so thank you, um, everyone, for tuning in. Um, I'm going to try to make this a quick word. Now, I, in my defense, in the um, uh, title for this video, I did not put that it was a quick word, but I'm still going to try to make it one. Okay. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am Pastor Theo D.C. Moore of Living Sacrifice Outreach Ministries, also known as hashtag LSOM. And um, just want to share with you something that God was dealing with me um, on, and I think a lot of you will be able to relate to it. So if you saw the title of this, it says, Walking in Poop. Walking in Poop. And poop is an acronym. It is an acronym. And what the acronym stands for is the pain of obedience paradigm the pain of obedience paradigm and for those who are unfamiliar with the definition of a paradigm it is a typical example or a pattern of something okay um or like a model so we're going to be talking about walking in poop walking in the pain of obedience paradigm okay so um i'm gonna just start with a scripture from genesis chapter 17. um if you're taking any notes i would um uh recommend for you to write down genesis chapter 17 and for you to read at least verses 9 through 27. i'm not going to read all of those tonight but um, I will be just skipping around a little bit. So I'm going to start at verse 9. And this is in reference to the covenant that God made with Abraham. Verse 9 starts, Then God said to Abraham, Your responsibility is to obey the terms of the covenant. You and all your descendants have this continual responsibility. This is the covenant that you and your descendants must keep. Each male among you must be circumcised. You must cut off the flesh of your foreskin as a sign of the covenant between me and you. From generation to generation, every male child must be circumcised on the eighth day after his birth. This applies not only to members of your family, but also to the servants born in your household and the foreign born servants whom you have purchased. All must be circumcised. Your bodies will bear the mark of my everlasting covenant. Any male who fails to be circumcised will be cut off from the covenant family for breaking the covenant. Verse 24 um, through 26 says, Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised. And Ishmael, his son, was 13. Both Abraham and his son, Ishmael, were circumcised on that same day. And for anyone who might be saying, well, where's Isaac? Isaac was not yet born. Um, God gave the promise of Isaac at this time, but Isaac was not yet born. So the first thing I just want to um, discuss when, as we're talking about walking in poop, walking in the pain of obedience paradigm, you're not too old or too young to obey God. See, a lot of old people feel like, well, I'm too old to change. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're not too old to change. As long as you have breath in your body, you, if you need to make a change, then you need to do that. If you're young, 
a lot of people feel like because they're young that they have a lot of time well just let me live my life and let me make my mistakes and it, no you're not too young to obey god in this instance abraham received the instructions of this covenant that God made with him. And he's telling Abraham, I'm going to prosper you. I'm going to give you so many descendants. There's going to be kings and rulers in your bloodline. All of this that he's saying about Abraham. And so Abraham wanting to accept the terms of the covenant, well, really wanting to accept the rewards of the covenant, was willing to comply with the terms. So him being 99 years old allows his foreskin. And for those who don't know, now let me just say, I, I don't, I shoot from the hip. I'm not vulgar, but you know, we are, we're, we're grown people here. So the foreskin of his penis, he allows to be cut off. Now, if he did it himself, he's really a no limit soldier in my book. But nevertheless, whether he did it himself or someone else did it, um, and you know what? He probably did do it himself because God told him. Well, he said, well, I don't know. He just said that, eat. no, wait a minute. He said, you must cut off the flesh of your foreskin as a sign between. So maybe Abraham had to be the one to do it. If we're looking at the word um, and really looking at it literally, literally in that way. So he might have had to do his own. And that's that's something, you know props to Abraham. But um, nevertheless, and even Ishmael being 13 years old, see, in our society, boys who get circumcised are typically infants, infants. So they have no recollection, even though the parents, you know, they're crying, oh, my baby, you know, but they do it. The children, the, the your sons, they, they never remember. They don't know what the pain felt like. It's over. It's done. And Thus begins the healing process after that. So at 99 years old, at 13 years old for Ishmael, they get circumcised as well as every male in the household. That is definitely an, an example of the pain of obedience. Because it's kind of like you're looking at it and it's like, okay, God, I hear what you're saying, but what does this have to do with anything what does this have to do with me obeying you or or how how does this you know um mark the covenant that we made you know i mean if you want me to put something on my body could we did you know we could have created a tattoo or something you know i'd have put that on there but nevertheless this is what god required and he obeyed the next thing i just want to um bring out is that everything that is connected to you should be obedient to god Everything connected to you should be obedient to God. God says to him that is, he says in um, the latter part of verse 12, this applies not only to members of your family, but also to the servants born in your household and the foreign born servants whom you have purchased. And the first part of um, 13 says all must be circumcised. Now, granted, you know, we're not living, well, nobody should be owning anybody that is uh, illegal now. Um, so we're not walking around here as a, a normal occurrence with owning people. So let's not look at it literally in that way. But if you have people who you say are your best friends, your BFFs, you know, that's my partner, that's my girl, you know, whatever it is, any type of close relationship. I'm not talking about, you know, you in the marketplace because we may have to work for people who don't care anything about the Lord. But if God is putting us in an environment like that, then he has an assignment for us while we're there and we need to find out what it is. Okay. But nevertheless, if you have people who are very intimately connected to you, you should not have anybody that close to you that is not walking in obedience to God. Because the question then becomes who's leading who? Either you're being influenced by them or they're being influenced by you. And if you're obedient to God, then it should convict them or inspire them and encourage them to be obedient to God as well. And you should require that of the people who are around you. Yes. It's not about telling people what to do or how to live their lives. 
But if you are walking in submission to God, what does that not bother your spirit that somebody who you claim is so close to you and they're not? How can you say you really love them if you don't encourage them to walk in obedience to God? I don't think that's love at all. I, I, I This is me. I don't think that that's love at all. Love, if I really love you, the, the Bible says faithful. It's in Proverbs. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. All that means is that if I'm your friend, I will hurt your feelings because I love you if it's to help you. But if I don't really love you, oh, I'll just kiss you, tell you everything is okay, not require you to be anything or, or push you, you know, or inspire you and encourage you to be anything more than what you are right now. If, if, if I'm just stroking you and coddling you and telling you what, what you want to hear, then I'm not really your friend. I'm really an enemy. But if I love you, I'm going to tell you what's right. Not in judgment, but in love. Okay, so first thing, you're not too old or too young to obey God. Secondly, everything connected to you should be obedient to God. Now, for some people who are saying, well, you know, um, we don't necessarily have to be circumcised, you know, as far as the men are concerned. Um, and God, oh, Lord have mercy. Okay, I'm not even going to go into what just came in my head. Let me move on. Um, so for those who are saying, well, we don't have to be um, circumcised anymore that's not necessary well let's talk about the circumcision of the heart romans 2 verses 25 to 29 says the jewish ceremony of circumcision has value only if you obey god's law but if you don't obey god's law you are no better off than an uncircumcised gentile verse 28 for you are not a true Jew just because you were born of Jewish parents or because you have gone through the ceremony of circumcision. 29. No, a true Jew is one whose heart is right with God. And true circumcision is not merely obeying the letter of the law. Rather, it is a change of heart produced by the spirit and a person with a changed heart seeks praise from God, not from people. Okay. And I'm going to tack on to that first Samuel um, chapter 16, verse seven, where Samuel um, is being told by the Lord when he was going to um, anoint David as the new King, even though he didn't know it was David. Um, when Jesse brought his, um, first son um, up, he said, okay, yeah, surely this has got to be the son. And God said, no, that's not him. He brought the next one. He's like, no, that's not him. And God says, but the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. The next point I just want to make to you about walking in poop, walking in the pain of obedience paradigm is tradition and religion don't prove you are in covenant with God. The condition of your heart does. My God. Tradition and religion do not prove that you are in covenant with God. The condition of your heart does. See, a lot of people, they go through a lot of ritualism. They have a lot of practices. They want to hold fast to how they were brought up and the way things were done. And they go through all of that. But their hearts are evil. Their hearts are dark. Their hearts have so much junk in it. Bitterness, anger, unforgiveness, malice, gossiping, backbiting. All of that that's coming out of your heart but you doing everything that looks like you're following God. You're doing the things of someone who says that they're obedient to God, but your heart is messed up. That's why you're so judgmental. That's why you don't have empathy for people because your heart needs to be cleaned out. It needs to be transformed. Really what it needs to be is the Bible says, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. That's what you need God to do for you. 
to create in you a clean heart. My husband, Pastor Tamon, um, quotes very often about the heart being wicked and deceitful. That's in the word. It is. So you have to have a heart change. That is what is going to prove that you are in covenant with God. Because when your heart is changed, then you will obey God even when you don't really want to. Again, we're, talk we're talking about walking in poop, walking in the pain of obedience paradigm. Typical example. Obedience, pain comes with it. It's synonymous. When you're being obedient, it does not always feel good. It's painful or it feels weird or you're like, God, this is not comfortable. It's not, all, it, it's not always something that feels good. It's not. It's not. So, again, make sure your heart is fixed. Um, I want to go on to Matthew 26, verses 36 to 39. And this is talking about Jesus when he went to the Garden of, of Gethsemane to pray. So it says in verse 36, Then Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane. And he said, Sit here while I go over there to pray. He took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he became anguished and distressed. Listen to this, verse 38. He told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little farther and bowed with his face to the ground, praying, my father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. For our King James people, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Okay? So Jesus goes back and sees them sleeping. He's like, okay, could you not pray just an hour? Get up, you know, pray before, you know, um, you get tempted. And he goes back, he prays again, comes back, they stay sleep again. You know, so he's getting a little frustrated with them. So finally, he's like, you know, y'all just go ahead and sleep. But then... He says, okay, no, but y'all need to go ahead and get up because the betrayer is coming. So Judas is coming with the entourage, right? So um, then one of the disciples and then uh, one of the uh, books, I think it's Luke, um, they pull out their swords and they're like, okay, you know, Lord, we have our sword. Should we fight? You know? And then one of the disciples cuts off the ear of one of the high priest's slave. Now, for so long, now let me just add this tidbit. For so long, I've heard people preach, yeah, Peter cut off the ear. Now, I'm going to have to do some more research, but I know in the two books that I looked at, it did not say it was Peter. Peter was there, but it didn't say that Peter cut off the ear. So I'm just saying, I'm going to have to look in that and see if another translation says that. But in both that I saw, in both accounts, it just said that one of the ones with him did that. But that's a little tidbit because, you know, I like facts with the word. So anyway, so cuts off the ear. Jesus picks it up, you know, puts the ear back on, heals it. Um, so 52, he says, put away your sword, Jesus told them. Those who use the sword will die by the sword. Here's the key verses here to my next point. Don't you realize that I could ask my father for thousands, for thousands of angels to protect us and he would send them instantly? But if I did... How would the scriptures be fulfilled that describe what must happen now? My God. Our obedience to the will of God allows our prophetic destiny to be fulfilled. Jesus in the morning. How are, how are you going to walk in what has been prophesied for your life if you don't obey? If you cut out halfway through the process, how do you expect to access everything that God has for you? No, you have to endure to the end. You got to see it all the way through. And, and what's so messed up is Jesus tells them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. 
And he just says, just stay here and keep watch with me. He already knew what was coming, but he just needed a little time to get away to himself. He wasn't even far. He didn't even go that far from them. And they keep falling asleep. And he's like, okay, yeah, I'm God in the flesh, but I'm still subject to this flesh. So you think I'm not tired too? And I don't get a moment to, I didn't get a vacation. I, I didn't get a sabbatical before I could, you know, get ready to go on ahead and get to this cross. If anything, my first 30 years was my sabbatical. Getting prepared for three, three and a half years worth of service. And then I got to go die. You understand what I'm saying? So he's hurt and he's in pain. And a lot of times we'll have people who really love us, who really mean well, and we can really let them know that we're going through something. And that we just need just you don't need a lot. I don't need much from you, but I just need you to do this. And they may fail you. They may fail you in that time. But it doesn't mean that it's an excuse for you to abandon the assignment God has given you to do. It doesn't mean that you can put it on pause because in one of the other videos we did um, for transforming you, or Pastor Tom Ron and I, delayed obedience is disobedience so because you want to put it on yourself to take some time okay well let me get it together you know or let, let me first do this you know let me get this arranged just before i go on ahead and do what god said no no whether people are with you or not you need to go on ahead and obey god because if you don't you will forfeit things within your destiny okay so if you're unsure of how to obey God, it's very simple. Follow Christ's example. Now, I don't have the scripture reference in front of me. I know it's in the New Testament. I know it's toward the back. But it talks about Christ being our, our example, that in all ways he was tested as we were, but without sin. He is our example. He is our example. Yes, we're in this flesh. Yes, we've sinned. Yes, we know that he was without sin. So that kind of cancels us out. So, you know, we don't have any chance to be in this body without sin. But we do have the opportunity to follow his example and be better. And to really be able to get victory in some areas of our lives where we're not still struggling with it until he comes again. No, you got to learn how to be able to get victory over some of the things that plague you. I'm sorry. No, you can't use that as an excuse that, you know, what well, the flesh is, you know, is, 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 is strong and, you know, my, my spirit is willing, you know, my flesh is weak, but it's strong in its weakness because it keeps, you know, the wood that I would do uh, that I do not. What's that, Romans 7? No, 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 no. You have to get to a point where you start disciplining your body and letting your flesh know who's in charge. Not your, your flesh, not your emotions. No, but the spirit of the living God must be in charge of you. All right. Um, and I, I think I'm doing pretty good because I'm almost done. Um, the last um, thing I just want to talk about is um, coming from Hebrews chapter 5, verses 7 through 8. It says, while Jesus was here on earth, he offered prayers and pleadings with a loud cry and tears to the one who could rescue him from death. Now, we know where to run to. I know how to run to the rock. That's higher than I, Jesus. All right. And God heard his prayers because of his deep reverence for God. Even though Jesus was God's son, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. The last thing I'm just going to mention is there is no such thing as old money in God's kingdom. You are royalty. Yes, indeed you are, but you're going to have to suffer some things. You just are. Now, see, when we look at old money, old money um, in the earth realm is money that has been passed down through generations. So you have some people, and you see a lot of these celebrities, these young kids, and they've never worked a day in their life. They don't know anything about struggle or earning a dollar because they have money, but they've inherited it from their parents. And some of the parents inherited it from their parents. You know, that's old money. New money is when you 
work and you make yourself into something like like, like a mark zuckerberg that's that's new money oprah that's new money okay they got it off of their own efforts i mean definitely the you know blessings of god whether they give god um glory um for or not um and that, that goes for anybody but in the kingdom there is no old money and what i'm meaning by that yes we have the inheritance of 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 god yes we're heirs and joint heirs with christ so yes i know that so if you want to correlate that to old money that's fine but the point that i'm making is in verse eight where it says even though jesus was god's son even though even though you have been bought with a price even though you claim god to be your father and jesus to be your savior yes you have you are entitled to that inheritance but not completely right now yes would that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers i would you know um that you uh, might have life and have it more abundantly yes press down shaking together running over yes all of that god wants us to have that but at the same time it's not gonna just come to us simply because we belong to god no you're gonna have to suffer and that's where walking in poop comes into play because now maybe everybody hasn't experienced this but if you've ever been walking somewhere and you step in that and I'm talking about literal fecal matter, okay, feces. <laughs> okay, I'm about to go say something. Okay, I'm not going there. I'm gonna be nice, but uh, it wasn't it wasn't profane, but still. But anyway, um, to get that on your shoe, oh my gosh! I don't care if there's a hose and bleach right there. You feel so dirty. Nobody wants to step in that, and God forbid you don't have the um the opportunity to get it off. And God forbid you have on some sneakers with all them grooves in it. Oh, Jesus. Make you want to just throw them away and just go into the, 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 the first foot locker you see. So nobody likes to walk in that. Even if it's old and hard and it doesn't have a smell anymore, your mind makes you smell it because you know you stepped in it. You understand what I'm saying? So when you're walking in poop, when you're walking in the pain of obedience paradigm, that pain that you're in for the sake of obeying God, you don't always feel like, you know, well, yes, I'm the righteousness of God and I'm doing the right thing. You don't always wear that as a badge of honor because truth be told, a lot of things you don't want to do. Like Jesus said, my father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet... I want your will to be done, not mine. Now with us, we kind of leave off that last part. We just like, God, can you just please just stop this? God, I'm just tired of going through the, please God, just put it to an end. God, where's my breakthrough coming? That's, that's where we are. And so we're not following the example of Jesus to say, to tack on at the end, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. So I definitely do hope that something you all have heard tonight has helped you to understand it doesn't feel good a lot of times when we are walking in obedience because it's painful. It requires things that we don't necessarily want to do. It requires sacrifices that we may not even understand. And you got to remember, you're not too old or too young to obey God. You need to do it and you do not need to delay. Don't walk in delayed obedience because you're still being disobedient because from the time God told you to do something, he intended for you to do it then. Unless he said, okay, here are my instructions, but wait, because the time hasn't come yet. Okay, then you be obedient. But then when he says the time has come, you need to do it. Remember that if you have connections with people, who are not walking in obedience. You need to check that. You need to check. Are they influencing you or are you or are you influencing them? Because if you really love them, you should want to see them get everything that God has for them. You can't say that you tight with somebody that doesn't care about pleasing God at all. 
Really? Now, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Has nothing to do with love. It has nothing to do with loving that person. Because you can love a lot of people. I love a lot of people who don't care nothing about Jesus Christ. I love them. And the Bible tells me that I should. He tells me that I should love them. But we have to be careful of how our affiliations are. Jesus communed and ate with people who were sinners. And oh my gosh, the Pharisees and Sadducees and the scribes, they had issues with him for doing that, but he never assimilated to them. He preached the kingdom of God. He preached salvation through him. And those people either rejected him or they accepted him, but he never con uh, conformed to them. You understand what I'm saying? That's why I'm saying you need to be careful of who you are connected to. Um, tradition and religion don't prove that you are in covenant with God. The condition of your heart does. Don't tell me about what you do. What you do does not matter if your heart is evil and dark and you're causing discord among brethren and you gossiping like crazy and you're trying to ruin people's reputation and you're bitter and you're angry and you won't forgive. I don't care how much you take uh, uh, communion, which you should be scared of that too, because the Bible says that when you don't do it with your, and your heart is not, when you um, take communion, your heart is not right. He said for uh, a lot of you sleep. First of all, a lot of you uh, are sick and sleep. And that sleep don't mean that you just went to bed. No, you died. So don't play around with communion, but that's another um, topic for another day. But you have to be careful. You have to be careful that you are not allowing rituals and how you were brought up in those things, trying to make that justify or qualify your salvation. No, no, no. Your heart needs to be right. It needs to be right. Your obedience to the will of God allows your prophetic destiny to be fulfilled. You can't try to access the rewards if you won't go through the process. You have to go through the process in order to get the greater. If you're unsure of how to obey God, follow Christ's example. That's pretty self-explanatory. You don't know how to do it? Look at what Jesus did. WWJD, what would Jesus do? Well, then you get to doing that too. And there's no such thing as old money in God's kingdom. You are royalty. Yes, you are. But you're going to have to suffer some things. So I pray that this has been a blessing um, to those of you who did tune in. I appreciate you guys. I really do. I really do. I never um, take you off for granted because you could be doing a whole lot more with your time. You could be in the bed by now. But I thank you for tuning in. And I do pray that something said um, blessed you. I do. And if it did, I, please share it. Share it with somebody. Um, also, take a look at our page, Living Sacrifice Outreach Ministries, hashtag LSOM, um, or you can just type in the at symbol LSOM 1212. And that's our page. Like our page. That way you can kind of be updated on what we're doing when we're going out, um, our next event in the community. I know this Friday we're going back to Atlanta Recovery Center where um, Pastor Tama will be ministering to those men. Um, our food ministry, Manna, will be cooking um, a meal for them. We're gonna, they're going to have some fried chicken. They're going to have uh, from scratch collard greens. Uh, what else? Cornbread. And yams yeah that's what they're gonna have tonight so you know we feed them good we feed them the things that we would like to eat you know so um so we're definitely looking forward to that so again like the page see what we're doing um and we just thank you for you know just the blessing of your time so father god in jesus name we thank you for everyone who has tuned in tonight i speak health and healing to everybody and i speak that the spirit of obedience will just run through the body, God, that everyone will be so implored and so, so invoked to just obey you, God. Let submission come to the body of Christ today, God, in every way to your will. God, I speak right now, God, that we not view walking in poop as a bad thing. Let us see that walking in the pain of obedience paradigm is what will qualify us 
to access our prophetic destiny. So God, I thank you for everyone. I speak healing. I speak health, wealth, peace of mind. In the name of Jesus, I speak good decisions. I speak um, favorable phone calls, favorable letters, God, unexpected checks in the mail. And I speak a spirit of good stewardship over that financial increase in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak debt cancellation right now, God. I speak protection over vehicles, over refrigerators, over washers and dryers, God. God, I just speak that no unexpected issue will come upon your people, God, and cause us to be in a position where we feel like we're in a bind, God. So I just thank you, God, and I thank you, God, for your people tonight. In Jesus' name, it is so. Thank you all. Love you. Have a wonderful night. And walk in some poop today. Walk in some poop. It's good for you. <laughs> I love you. Good night.